أدعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة اللهم إنا نسألك إيمانا لا يرتد ونعيما لا ينفد وقرة عين لا تنقطع ونسألك الله فالخالق البارئ مصور هو الله So Allah is the Khalid, he is the Bari, he is the Musawwir, Allah. الناس يتمسون في الفقه في العبادات وفي المعاملات. أما إذا بالفقه بكم بنجد؟ كيف أنك أنت في بن بنتك عيب لا تبينه؟ وكيف أنت في ولدك عيب ولا تبينه؟ I've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. It's now near 10 or so 12 hours. And alhamdulillah, very, very beneficial. Took a lot of notes and learned, we've learned a lot today, basically. Jazakallah khair. I found the one down at conference. Uh, beneficial, beautiful, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, I find it very beneficial. Mashallah, it's really good. Um, it was very beneficial because I met lots of brothers that I never met before in different races from all over different parts of London. Can call me that I jump like the one was holding on to a burning coal. التجاوز يا واسع المغفرة يا عظيم المن اللهم الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن اهتدى بهديهم إلى يوم الدين وبعد. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. The Sheikh began by praising Allah Azza wa Jal and sending salutations of peace and blessings upon the Khatim of the Anbiya and the Mursaleen and upon those who follow his way with Ihsan until Yom al Qiyam. بعث الله تبارك وتعالى نبيه صلى الله عليه وسلم بالهدى ودين الحق. الله تعالى sent his رسول صلى الله عليه وسلم with guidance and the religion of truth. وكان الناس في جاهلية عمياء. and the people when he came to them were in deep rooted جاهلية. يعبدون غير الله. worshiping other than Allah. من الأصنام والأحجار. Worshiping idols and trees. And there was a great amount of oppression that was widespread amongst them. So he called the people to Allah. And some people they accepted his call. وَدَخَلَ فِي دِينِهِ مَنْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ لَهُ بِهِ الْخَيْرِ And the people that Allah wanted for them good, they entered into the deen. وَرَفَضَ هَذَا الدِّينِ And it was refused. فَرِيقٌ مِنَ النَّاسِ A group of people from the people. وَاسْتَرَرَ النَّبِيُّ عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامُ And the Nabi Sallallahu remained in that condition. ثَلَاثَةً وَعِشْرِينَ عَامًا بَيْنَ قَوْمٍ Twenty-three years giving da'wah amongst his people. يعلمهم القرآن والسنة. He was teaching them the Quran and the Sunnah. وفتح الله تبارك وتعالى عليهم. And Allah Taala gave them victory. وعز بهم الدين. And He increased and made strong for them the Deen. وفتح كثيرا من البلاد للإسلام. And many of the Islamic countries were conquered. ودخل الناس في دين الله أفواجا. And many people came into the religion in droves and waves. واستمر الفتح الإسلامي. And the Islamic victories they continued حتى وصل إلى العالم بأسره. Until it reached all of the world. وها نحن بعد أربعة عشر قرنا من الزمان. And here we are after fourteen centuries have passed by. نعيش في هذا الدين. We are living in this religion. غير أنه تغيرت. Except that there are a number of issues that have changed. And these changes that took place. 
أدى إلى ألوان مختلفة من الانحراف. They have led to different types of going astray, انحراف. وتوسع الناس في كثير من الأمور. And the people they began to allow themselves to take liberties in many issues. والشيطان والهوى. And shaitan and desires. كان لهما من الأثر الكبير. Both of them, shaitan and desires, they had a big effect on the people. في تغيير كثير من العقائد والأحكام. And concern in relationship to a lot of what the people believed and in a lot of the ahkam that the people were upon. وتأثر كثير من الناس بذلك. And many people were affected by this. ونحن إذ نظ إذا نظرنا إلى عالمنا اليوم. And we if we were to look and contemplate and look at the world today, we're going to find that there are many different types of assorted inhirafat, people going astray. In aqeedah, in the way people behave, and in the, in the, in the actions of the people. And now the Muslim is the one who, when he lives in different places today, he's going to find a lot of trials and tribulations all around him. And as a result of that, we find that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told us that there's going to come a time to the people that the one who holds on to his religion is like the one who was holding on to a burning coal. And that's because the ikhtilaf that we find with the people in terms of what they believe, in terms of their akhlaq, and in terms of the ahkam, the things that they're doing. So if we were to look at the world today, سنجد أن فيه ألوانا مختلفة متعددة من الشرك. We're going to find all different types of manifestations of a shirk. فالجاهلية الأولى. The first جاهلية. كانوا يعبدون الحجارة والأصنام. They used to worship. والرجال. They used to worship rocks. They used to worship idols. They used to worship men. من دون الله. Other than Allah, along with Allah. وفي العصر الحاضر. But now, during this time. نجد ألوانا متعددة. We find many different types of things. من الشرك أيضا. That shirk is taking place in. فبعض الناس. Some of the people. يعبدوا غير الله. They worship other than Allah. فالنصارى مثلا. The Christians for an example. يعبدون المسيح. They worship the Messiah. وبعض المسلمين. And some Muslims. يقدسون بعض الأشخاص. They say that some personalities of Islam are sacred and holy. وظهرت فرق مختلفة. And there were a lot of parties and groups that have appeared with the Muslims. يدعي أصحابها. The people from these groups they say. أن النبوة والرسالة. That the prophet, prophethood and messengership. لم تختم بالنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. It wasn't completed by the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. قال قد يانية وغيرها. Like the Qadyanis and other than the Qadyanis. And these different types of groups. And these types of shirk, it's, it's different types of shirk and different types of being astray. The person who's just a general regular person, he can get lost in all of this stuff. So what is an obligation upon the Muslim? أن يعض بالنواجذ على ما كان عليه النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. It's for him to hold down with his molars to what the prophet was upon صلى الله عليه وسلم. فكما أن الصحابة الكرام. Just as the companions may Allah be pleased with them. أخلص الدين لله. They had total absolute sincerity in the religion for Allah. وعبد الله وحده دون سواه. And they worshipped Allah alone without worshipping anyone else along with him. كذلك يجب على المسلمين اليوم. This is also something that is wajib upon the Muslims today. أن يتحرر في عقيدتهم. That the person today pays attention to clarifying and clearing his aqida. عبادة الله وحده. They can show that he's worshiping Allah alone. فالخالق البارئ المصور هو الله. So Allah is the خالق. He is the البارئ. He is the مصور alone. والمعبود بحق. 
and he is the one who deserves to be worshipped in reality. It is Allah alone and no one else along with him. And what is other than that, other than Allah? Then it is falsehood or batil. And as a result, it is an obligation upon the Muslim to make ilzam and to really force himself ما كان عليه النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام to be upon what the Nabi used to be upon وصحابته الأخيار and his Sahaba رضي الله عنه فلا يعبد إلا الله don't worship anyone other than Allah ويبقى متمسكا بهذا الأصل and let him remain in that condition holding firmly upon it والنبي عليه الصلاة والسلام also the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم قد دعا إلى ذلك وأكد he called to this, he invited to it, and he made emphasis on it. As the hadith of Hudayf ibn al-Yaman illustrates. May Allah be pleased with him. Hudayf, he questioned and asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. عما يمكن أن يحدث بعد زمن الفضل والخير. He asked him about some of the things that can possibly happen after the era where there was a lot of good and a lot of virtues. فأخبره النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. The Nabi told Hudayf صلى الله عليه وسلم بأنه سيحدث تغيير بين المسلمين. That there are going to be a lot of things that are going to change from within and amongst the Muslims. وأن البلايا والفتن. And that the trials and tribulations. والفرق and the divisions ستخرج وتوجد سكم they're gonna come out and they're gonna manifest themselves وهنا سأل حذيفة رضي الله عنه when حذيفة heard this at this point he asked the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه الصلاة والسلام عن المخرج من ذلك of the way of being safe and the way of getting out of that problem فقال له النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. So the Nabi told Hudayf صلى الله عليه وسلم. إلزم جماعة المسلمين وإمامهم. That you should stick to the group of Muslims, the جماعة of the Muslims and their imam. Stick to them. وجماعة المسلمين الأولى. And the first group of Muslims, the first جماعة. هي ما كان عليه النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. It was what the Nabi was upon صلى الله عليه وسلم. ونحن مأمورون. And we have been commanded. أن نسير على هذا النهج. To go on that way and to tread that path. وأن نلتزم بهذا الحق. And to hold on to that truth. ولما سأل حذيفة رضي الله عنه. Also when حذيفة asked the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم. إذا لم تكن هناك جماعة للمسلمين أو إمام. If there does not exist a group of Muslims, a جماعة, an imam, if it is not there, what should I do? ماذا يفعل المسلم? What should the Muslim do? قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. He told حذيفة. ولو أن تعض على أصل شجرة. He said to leave all of them. Even even if you had to hold on to a tree, and you stay in that condition until death comes to you, and you're holding on to that tree. قال أهل العلم في معنى الحديث. The people of knowledge, the ulama, they say in explaining this hadith. يعني تعض على أصل شجرة. You know, bite on the tree. The meaning of bite on that tree. تتمسك بمنهج النبوة. They said that it means. Hold on to the minhaj and the methodology of the Prophet and have sabr on that truth that you are upon. And even if it meant that you would be by yourself in that regard. Until death comes to you and that's your condition. Also in addition to that. بالنسبة للأخلاق والمعاملات. In relationship to people's Akhlaq and the way that they deal with each other. كان الناس the people they used to قبل عهد النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام before the time that the Nabi came out they used to يأكل القوي الضعيف the strong person would devour the weak person ويتعاملون بالربا and they used to deal with ربا وكانت المرأة and the woman at that time تطوف بالكعبة she would go and make tawaf around the Kaaba عارية and she didn't have any clothes on she was naked لا يغطيها شيء nothing would cover her up فتغير حال الناس بعد النبوة so the 
condition of the people it changed after prophecy came to them and after they learned the good aspects of akhlaq and they when the nubuwa came the people changed and stopped doing that stuff and they started behaving in a proper way and then after that the situation changed so after all of that good that came, the people started doing actions that were no good. A lot of people today, for an example, they deal with the riba. And others, they devour the monies of other peoples in an unjust way. And some people, if he was strong or rich he would like overpower the weak, weak person and overpower the poor so many of the women today they are naked or they resemble nakedness and this is a big fitna in itself and the Muslim has been commanded in this case to deal with the issue in the way of justice and the truth for it's not acceptable for him to tra have transactions in interest riba he shouldn't devour people's monies with falsehood and he should not oppress and prevent the people from getting their rights and he should be an individual who has good behavior and not look at those things that Allah made haram. And this, in fact, it means that the person has some strength and power and ability. So the one who makes it an obligation to have good akhlaq and all of these terrible things that are going going on right now, the one who is doing it and he's practicing it, he's like the one who is holding on to the burning coal. Because the desires, the nafs, the, the, the nafs it likes and it's attracted to these things that are haram. And the shaitan, he beautifies these things. And the desires that are inside of the people, they encourage people to follow and to practice and to fall into this stuff. And it, inquire, it encourages the person to go outside of the guidance. And it tells the person not to have good akhlaq that is uh, acceptable. So this issue, it needs strong iman. And it needs an ardent desire. And it needs the people to have sabr on what is in contradiction to the deen. And the people concerning their dunya today, they uh, have gone to do different actions. And that's because many people are trying to get money. And that's because there is a big wrestling match, a big struggle in terms of accumulating wealth. And the conditions of the life that we're living. And the natural way that the society is. It may ask the person and request from the person for him to, in his night time, to deal with these types of things. But the real Muslim has to be distinct and unique and different from other people in this regard. For an example, the person in every time and in every place as a Muslim he has the ability in every time and every place to do the things what Allah made farad upon him and all of the uh, different uh, principles and arkan of al-Islam so if you were working for an example in the college or the university or the, or the, or, or the factory if you were working and the time of the salah came in it may be difficult for some Muslims 
to continue the with working to continuously do what Allah Ta'ala has made obligatory upon him but the obligation on everyone is that we have to hold on to the pillars of Islam in this religion so the person has to stop working at the time of the salah and in doing this it may be some part of difficulty on the person to do it. Except that we say concerning this, we have to hold on to our religion the same way that we hold on to the burning coal. We have to understand the importance of being upon and taking care of the salah. Even if taking care of it may be difficult on the nafs. Or it may be outside of what the society is accepting or saying is okay. The Sheikh said that he knows that in this type of place where we're living here, it would be extremely difficult for an individual to stop working to go and do what Allah may fard upon him and if he were to do that then he is like the one who was holding on to the burning coal and that is something that is expected and intended from him it is wajib upon him to do that also, in regards to the tarbiya that he has for himself and his children, the, the person he finds in the society that there is some inhiraf. There are, for an example, many, many masajid. And there are many, many things that are from the munkarat. So this individual has to have patience. And he has to beautify himself with the sabr. So that he can confront these issues that are challenges for him in his life. The money, it may be beautiful. And and the dunya may be enticing and sweet. The person may go towards it to acquire it and accumulate it. But when the person holds on to his deen, he is in reality like the person who is holding on to a burning coal. Also in these societies that we find ourselves in, we find that the woman she has become a toy inside of the society to be played with. She came out, she went out and she showed her beautification and she became a fitna for the people. And this from the woman, it affects the man and it affects the Muslim as it is well known in a case like this the Muslim has to lower his gaze from what Allah has made haram and he shouldn't follow shaitan and obey shaitan in this and no doubt this is difficult for the nafs except that it is something that is intended and meant for you in this dunya that we're in so that we can and will please our Lord and it is also a permanent obligation upon us that we remember and we remind ourselves of the lives of the companions may Allah be pleased with all of them it used to be during their time that their enemies would tell them to disbelieve in Allah and to make shirk. And one of them would be punished and persecuted. And he would be afflicted with all kinds of afflictions. Despite that, he has sabr on his deen. He wouldn't change and he didn't change. And the story of Ammar ibn Yasin and his mother and his father is a clear delil about that.
And look at what happened with Bilal, may Allah be pleased with them. The man Umayy ibn Khalaf used to bring him outside and he would oppress him and persecute him in the middle of the desert that was extremely hot. He used to put the back of Bilal on the hot sand. And then he would put on his chest a big boulder. And they would drag him on the hot sand. And they would tell him, hey, you better make shit. And to curse the Nabi and to swear against the Nabi. But he didn't do it, he didn't listen, he didn't obey. He had sabr for Allah's cause. So Bilal, Yasir, Abmar, they were people who were patient like the one who holds on to the burning coal. And the companion, he would meet his brother in the war. Or he would meet his father or his brother as opponents. He will fight against him in the cause of Allah. And this in reality, this is jihad in the cause of Allah and this is making sacrifices in the cause of Allah. And by doing these things, those companions, they were like people who were holding on coals, hot coals that are burning. And we, in our day today, we have to be like them and we have to follow their way and we have to hold on to this truth that has come to us from Allah even if it was difficult on us and the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he told us that the one who is holding on to his religion is like the one who is holding on to a burning coal and the meaning of that is that the person is going to find some difficulty when it comes to holding on to his deen the same way that an individual who puts a burning coal on his hand is also going to find it difficult and no doubt this is going to burn him and make him feel pain except though if he were to endure that pain for Allah's cause he was going to have patience in order to get and receive his reward from Allah and the one who is holding on to his religion during the time of al-fitin and in these types of situations we find ourselves in like this in those countries and those lands it's difficult this individual is clearly like the one who is holding on to a burning coal from all of the many fitin that are around him and the desires and the shaitan and for this reason it is obligatory upon us to talk about a sabr and to remind ourselves about the importance of a sabr because this patience, if the person was truthful in his patience, that patience is going to push him to endure the difficulties that he receives and there are three types of sabr or three situations you have to have sabr in. The first one is that the person has to have sabr in regards to obeying Allah and have sabr in what Allah may haram and he has to have sabr when confronting the enemies of Islam the enemies of Allah so for a person to do the ibadat and to do the things the sharia that have been made an obligation upon you 
خاصة في مثل هذه المجتمعات especially in these societies that we live in يحتاج إلى صبر it's definitely in need of having some sabr فالقيام بأركان الإسلام so for example taking care of the pillars of Islam من صلاة وصيام from fasting from salat وزكاة وحج and giving zakat and making hajj وأمر بمعروف ونهي عن منكر and encouraging the good and preventing the munkar ورعاية للآباء والأمهات and taking care of the mothers and the fathers والسير بالأخلاق الكريمة بين الناس and having good character amongst and with the people والصبر على أذاهم and being patient with what people are going to do to you يحتاج إلى عون وصبر all of that is requires help and it requires you having sabr hatta yastati' al-insan bis-sabr insha'Allah so that the individual by having sabr insha'Allah an yaquma bi maftarad Allah tabarak wa ta'ala be able to do and complete what Allah may fard upon him كذلك أيضا يصبر الإنسان على معاصي الله. Also number two from the maqamat of the sabr is the person has to have sabr on the معصية of Allah. فالإنسان فيه مرائس. The person he has desires, natural desires. وقد تدفعه هذه المرائس. And these desires that he has they may push him and encourage him. إلى الوقوع فيما حرم الله. To fall into those things that Allah may haram. وهذه الفتن والشهوات and these fitting and these shahwat these desires تحتاج إلى صبر they are in need of a person having صبر حتى لا يقع الإنسان فيها so the person doesn't fall inside of them ومن المعلوم أن مقاومة الشيطان والغرائز and no doubt from the abilities that a shaitan has been given the weapons that he has been given أمر شديد مع النفس is that for the person to try to push away the shaitan is not something that's easy on the nafs ولكن المسلم but the muslim يتذرع بالصبر he has to adorn himself with patience في مواجهة الشهوات in combating and confronting his desires كذلك الإنسان يحتاج إلى صبر في دعوته إلى الله also a khwani the individual is in need of a sabr when it comes to giving da'wah إلى الله فقد تواجه كثيرا من المخالفين because he may be confronted with a lot of people who are against the truth that he's on وقد يحاربك بعض الناس and some people may give you problems in your da'wah حتى من أهلك وأقاربك even those people may be from your family and your relatives أو من إخوانك وأصدقائك في العمل maybe from your brothers and maybe from your friends and your co-workers Co-workers. فلا بد من الصبر. So in giving them doubt, Allah, you have to have sabr. في مواجهة هؤلاء. In confronting them and dealing with them. حتى تمكن بدين الله عز وجل. So that you can cause, inshallah, the religion of Allah to prevail. ولذلك أخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. And for this reason, the Nabi he told us, صلى الله عليه وسلم. أن الصبر نصف الإيمان. That a sabr. Is considered to be half of iman. وذلك لأهميته. And that's because of the importance of sabr. ولحاجة الإنسان إليه. And because of the need that the person has for sabr. كما مدح الله الصابرين في كتابه. As Allah Taala gave مدح and He praised the sabirin in the Quran. وأخبر بما أعده لهم من أجر عظيم. And He told us of what He has prepared for them from the great reward. فقال في كتابه الكريم. He said in His book. إنما يوفى الصابرون أجرهم بغير حساب. Verily, the people who have patience, they will be given their sabr, they will be given their reward without any hisab. وخلاصة القول. And the the خلاصة the overall the conclusion the conclusion of what the Sheikh is saying. أنه يجب عليك أيها المسلم. Is that it is an obligation upon you, O Muslim, and to the masaka be had a deen that you hold on to this deen, aqida, and your aqida, wa amal, and your actions, wa khuluq, and your akhlaq, hatta walau nadak shayun min al ada fi sabil dal. Even if you were to be affected negatively by something in that cause in your religion, hatta walau kathurat min hawlik al fitan wa shahwat. Even if there are a lot of fitting and desires around you, you have to hold on to your deen. Even if the people want from you other than the truth. So you have to be patient. And you have to hold on to this deen. Even if you found some difficulty in that regard. So you have to, in relationship to this issue, 
be be aware من الهوى والنفس from the desires and following your desires والشيطان and beware of the shaytan والشهوات and the desires مدخل الشيطان إلى نفس الإنسان is an opening for the shaytan to come and to affect the human being فواجه هؤلاء جميعا so confront all of them shaytan, the hawa, the fitin confront all of that by having sabr in regards to the obedience of Allah and sabr on what Allah may haram and you should know that this dunya is short and it's going to finish والله عز وجل أنا الله عز وجل قد أعد النق قد أعد النعيم الدائم الباقي. He has prepared a naim that is perpetual in the paradise. لأهل الإيمان. For the people of the iman. الذين صبروا على هذا الدين. Those people who have patience. ونالوا ونالوا من الأذى في سبيل الله. In the religion they were harmed. In the cause of Allah. And the fadl or the virtues of Allah upon these people is tremendous. Big. And let us seek the assistance in Allah and with Allah in trying to hold on to this religion. And trying to tread upon the Sirat al Mustaqeen and worshiping Allah all by Himself without any. Even if all of the people happen to be against us in that issue. So the person has to be strong. It may be that the person is by himself, but he's still the jama'ah. If he held on to the truth. As it was reported from the statements of the Salaf. The Jama'ah is for you to be on the truth even if you're by yourself. We're going to stop and find this is enough. We're going to stop here and Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ala Nabiyyina. يا إخوان أعد الله لأهل الإيمان جنان. Brother, brothers, Allah Taala has prepared for the people of the Iman paradises. وهذه الجنان. And these paradises. فيها ما لا عين رأت. In it is what no eyes have ever seen. ولا أذن سمعت. And no ears have ever heard. ولا خطر على قلب بشر. And no mind or intellect has even contemplated was in the Jannah. ويكفي نعيما أن سنف نعيم أن تكون مع النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. That you are with the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. وأن ترى وجه الله الكريم في الدار الآخرة. And see that you will see the face of Allah تعالى in the hereafter. وهذا من أعظم النعيم. And this is from the greatest نعيم. الذي أعده الله لمن آمن بالله والتقاء. For the one who believed in Allah عز وجل and he feared Allah. نعم القرين يس أخبر النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم has explained to us أن كل واحد منا له قرين من الجن that everybody here he has a قرين from the jinn وأن الله عان النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام فأسلم هذا الجن and the نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم also had a قرين but Allah helped him and his قرين became a Muslim وأنا قلت سابقا and I said to you previously بأن الشيطان that the shaytan يحاول أن يصد الناس عن الحق he tries to prevent the people from the truth والعبد عليه أن يصبر في مواجهة الشيطان and the slave what he has to do is try to combat the shaytan ولا يسير وراءه and not to follow him والله في كتابه يقول and Allah said in the Quran ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم ألا تعبدوا الشيطان؟ Did I not tell you بني آدم that you should not worship the shaytan؟ 
وأمرنا الله بأن نستعيد به في مواطن. And Allah has commanded us to seek refuge in Him from the shaitan in many places. فقال تعالى مثلاً. He said for an example. وقل رب أعوذ بك من همزات الشياطين. Say, O oh my Lord, I seek refuge in You from the whispers and the assaults of the shaitan. وأعوذ بك رب أن يحضرون. And I seek refuge in You from allowing them to come in my presence. وفي آخر سورتين ختم الله بهما القرآن. And in the last as two surahs of the Quran that complete the actual Quran Allah said Say, I seek refuge in Allah from the Lord of the Falaq And he also said Say, I seek refuge in the Lord of the Nas Now the last one is the Shaykh said about it the sabr of confronting and dealing with the enemies of Islam so he mentioned it First of all, I remind myself and I remind the brothers of fear in Allah Azza wa Jal and have an istiqama on the deen of Allah and we have to always remember that Allah Ta'ala is watching everything that we do and that there are malaika as well who are recording what we're doing وأن هذه الأعمال and these actions يحصيها الله على العباد الله تعالى is going to hold the people accountable and responsible for that وستنشر بين يدي الإنسان يوم القيامة and يوم القيامة these actions they're going to be put before the human being before the person يوم القيامة فعلى المسلم أن يبيض صفيح صحيفته so the Muslim has to try his best to make his books white إذا وقف بين يدي الله so that when he stands before Allah عز وجل قال تعالى Allah Ta'ala said وَكُلَّ إِنْسَانٍ أَلْزَمْنَاهُ طَائِرَهُ فِي عُنُقِهِ Every human being we have made his deeds connected to his heart, his neck, meaning he's going to be questioned and responsible for what he did. وَنُخْرِجُ لَهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ كِتَابًا يَلْقَاهُ مَنْشُورًا And we're going to bring the book forward, يوم القيامة, and everything in that book will be made manifest. يَقَرَ كِتَابَكْ So read your book. كَفَى بِنَفْسِكَ الْيَوْمَ عَلَيْكَ حَسِيبًا You have been enough against yourself as a proof. عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِ أَنْ يَعُودَ إِلَى اللَّهِ مِنْ قَلِيمٍ The Muslim, he has to return to Allah quickly. وَأَلَّا يَقْنَطَ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ And he shouldn't give up hope concerning the rahmah of Allah. والله تعالى يقول Allah said إنه لا يأسم الروح الله إلا القوم الكافرون. No one gives up hope and despairs from the rahma of Allah except people who are kafirun. وعلى كل مسلم أن يتوب إلى الله. And every Muslim has to make توبة to Allah for what he did. وأن يرجع إليه. And return to Allah عز وجل. وليعلم. And he has to know. أن كل ذنب يتوب العبد منه. That every sin that the slave makes توبة from it. And he has the real true Tawbah Allah will forgive him Allah said Say oh my servants who have gone overboard And doing sins and crimes on themselves Don't give up hope concerning the Rahmah of Allah Verily Allah forgives all of the sins And Allah said وَمَنْ يَعْمَدْ سُوءًا أَوْ يَظْلِمْ نَفْسَهُ And whoever does evil or he oppresses himself ثُمَّ يَسْتَغْفِرِ اللَّهِ And then he makes his istighfar to Allah يَجِدِ اللَّهَ غَفُورَ الرَّحِيمِ He is going to find Allah غَفُور رَحِيمِ عُيُوبُ النَّاسِ تَظْهَرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامِ the sins and the mistakes of the people will be made manifest يوم القيامة. قال تعالى. Allah said. يوم تبل السرائر. On that day the secrets will be made apparent. فما له من قوة ولا ناصر. And he, the individual, won't have any help, any power, and won't have any helper. وقال تعالى. وجد ما عمل حاضرا. And Allah said as well, and the person will find what he did present.
لم يرد في هذا خبر صحيح عن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام. No authentic statements have come to us from the Nabi about that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa yawm al-jumaa idha da'a al-imam al member Hal yurfa' al-insan yadayhi. Hadhi mas'alatu al-khilafiyyatu al-bayna ahli al-ilm. This issue of raising the hands when the imam makes a dua on the member is ikhtilaq between the ulama. فالبعض يرى Some of them see أن الإنسان كلما دعا رفع يديه. That every time a person makes dua he raises his hands. وبعض العلماء يقول and some of the ulama they say بأن النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام that the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يدعو في خطبته يوم الجمعة he used to make the khutbah on the day of the Jum'ah ولم يخبر عنه أنه كان يرفع يديه. And it was not mentioned when the Nabi used to make the dua on the member it was not mentioned that he raised his hand. ولو فعل لنقل إليه. And if he did raise his hand then that was something that would have come to us we would have found out about it. وهو لم يفعله so he didn't do it إلا فيما يعرف بدعاء الاستسقاء. Except in what is known as the dua of an istisqa, when he used to make the dua for the rain, he would put his hands up. يعني طلب المطر من من الله. He would ask Allah عز وجل to send down the rain. تزكية القلوب بالإيمان بالله. Having the cleansing of the heart. The best way of doing it is having belief in Allah. And following the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And from the best methods that will lead to this. Is for a person to live with his Lord and his Mawla. By always making the dhikr of Allah azza wa jal. أي يعني الإنسان لا يلتفت إلى مثل هذه الفتن. The sheikh he said first of all concerning the many fitting the person shouldn't look at him try his best not to pay attention to him. ولا يخوض فيها. And he shouldn't get involved in them directly make himself involved in them. وإنما عليه فقط. But what he has to do is أن يلزم الطاعة والعبادة. Is just obey Allah Azza wa Jalla and do his ibadah. وأن يخضع ويخشع. And that he uh, has fear and consciousness. And it make, it's important to him. The main thing that's his importance and his golden objective is Allah. And that he uh, requests from Allah that Allah divinely protects him from these fitting. No. Last question. The Sheikh said, in any regard, in any event, some of the scholars mentioned that by itself. And he said, no doubt, having sabr on the qadr, it goes inside of and it's included with sabr on the obedience of Allah. And the Sheikh said he wanted to pay attention to this society and this environment that we're in. To remind about the importance of a da'wah in Allah. And to be patient with that and to carry it and to deal with it in the cause of Allah. And for the slave, the servant to have patience in that regard. Allahumma inna nas'aluka imanan la yartad wa na'iman la yanfad wa qurrata aynin la tanqatid wa nas'aluka Allahumma So Allah is the Khalid, he is the Bali, he is the Musawwir, Allah الناس يتميزون في الفقه في العبادات وفي المعاملات. أما إذا بفقه كيف أنك أنت في بلد بنتك عيب لا تبينه وكيف أنت في ولدك عيب ولا تبينه. I've been here since 10 o'clock this morning. It's now near 10 or 12 hours. And alhamdulillah, very very beneficial. Took a lot of notes. And learn, we learn a lot today, basically. Jazakallah khair. I found the one that our prophet is beneficial, beautiful, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, I find it very beneficial. Mashallah, really good. Very beneficial because I met 
lots of clubs that I never met before, different races from all over different parts of London. Can the carbon dioxide jumps like the one was holding on to a burning coal? Thank <laughs> you.